Given that we are dealing with a cycle here, we're going to start our explanations with follicle stimulating hormone, FSH. FSH levels are represented by the pink line. An increase in FSH levels will stimulate the development of the graphene follicles in the ovary. It will also stimulate estrogen production and this is an example of positive feedback. As the estrogen levels increase, this will repair and thicken the endometrium. There is also a positive feedback relationship between estrogen and LH, just as there was between FSH and the estrogen. So increasing levels of estrogen will result in increasing levels of LH and ultimately a peak in LH production. When levels of luteinizing hormone LH peak, this stimulates ovulation, which is the release of the ovum from the ovary to the oviduct, and it also stimulates the development of the corpus luteum. Now the corpus luteum is a temporary endocrine structure which is formed following the release of the ovum from the graphene follicles. Since the corpus luteum secretes progesterone, progesterone levels subsequently increase. The role of progesterone is to maintain the endometrium in preparation for fertilization. So if fertilization does take place, the corpus luteum continues to secrete the progesterone and continues to maintain the uterus lining. If, however, fertilization doesn't take place, the corpus luteum will disintegrate. This will result in a decrease in progesterone, and because the endometrium is no longer being maintained, menstruation will occur. Because there is a negative feedback relationship between progesterone and FSH, if the progesterone levels go down, FSH increases, and this takes us right back to the beginning of the cycle where we started from. So now we're going to recap those negative and positive feedback relationships between the hormones. So first of all, we had increases in FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, which stimulated the development of the graphene follicles. There was a positive feedback relationship between FSH and estrogen. So increases in FSH lead to increases in estrogen and the estrogen leads to the thickening of the endometrium. Increasing estrogen levels stimulated the production of luteinizing hormone, so that's another positive feedback relationship. And luteinizing hormone, a peak in this, caused ovulation and the subsequent development of the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum, that endocrine structure, then secreted progesterone, so progesterone levels increased. The role of the progesterone was to maintain the endometrium in preparation for fertilization. If fertilization doesn't happen, the corpus luteum would disintegrate, progesterone levels would decrease, FSH would subsequently increase as a result of negative feedback.